Hi, Matthew here, and I'm going to be talking you through this Leaving Cert Maths question. Let's get into it. We're going to look at question one, which is a 3D mark question on algebra. So we're going to start off with question one, part eight, which is worth 10 marks. And we're asked to solve the following three equations simultaneously. So then we're given three equations and each of them have three variables, x, y, and z. So now we have to find a value for x, y, and z. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label each of the equations with a different color. So the first one is going to be pink, the second one is going to be yellow, and the third one is going to be purple. So our first step here is to pick two equations and then to eliminate a variable from both of those equations. So I'm going to start off with the first two here, so the pink one and the yellow one, just the two easiest ones I think. So here we have our two equations and as you can see here, the y's will cancel each other out. We get plus 5y minus 5y, so that will be the variable that we choose to eliminate. Sometimes that won't happen and you have to multiply one or both equations by a number to make sure that a variable is eliminated. But as I said here, the y's will be eliminated straight away. So we do the sums down the way. So it's x plus 4x is going to give us 5x. And now, as I said, plus 5y minus 5y is just zero. So we can just eliminate those. And then plus 5z plus 4z is going to give us plus 9z. And that's going to be equal to minus 2 plus 19, which is 17. So I'm going to label that as equation star. And now this is an equation with only two variables in it. So the top three, the pink, yellow, and purple, all have three variables. But this star one down here, 5x plus 9z is equal to 17. That only has two variables, which is much easier to solve. But before we can solve, we need to pick two other of our equations at the top, the ones with the three variables, and get the same thing again. So we're going to have to pick two other equations. So I'm going to pick the yellow one and the purple one. And now we have to eliminate the same variable that we eliminated the first time. So it has to be the y variable again. And then we'll get another equation with two variables. And then we can solve both of those. And then we'll get a value for x and z. So I'm going to pick the yellow equation and the purple equation. So they're both of our equations. And once again, the y's will cancel each other out straight away. So the y's will be eliminated. And then we'll do the sums down the way again. So 4x plus x is going to give us 5x. And as I said, minus 5y plus 5y is just going to give us 0. So therefore, the y's are eliminated. And then minus 4z minus z is going to give us plus 3z. And that's going to be equal to 19 minus 20, which is just minus 1. And now I'm going to call this equation square. So we have equation star and equation square, and we can solve both of those simultaneously to find the value for x and z. Then once we have x and z, we'll be able to pop those back into one of our three original equations to find y. So I'm just going to write these out again. So here we have our two new equations, and both of these only have two variables, which is much easier for us to solve. So again, we have to eliminate one of the variables, and straight away here, there's no variable that cancels each other out. So we're going to have to do some multiplication. So we have 5x plus 5x, and then 9z plus 3z. Now, if one of the 5x's was minus, then the x's would go to zero, which is what we want. So I'm just going to multiply the top equation by minus 1, which will give us minus 5x minus 9z is equal to minus 17. And then we'll get minus 5x plus 5x to give us zero. So the bottom equation stays the same, and then we can do the sums down the way as we normally do. So as I said, minus 5x plus 5x will just go to zero, so that means that the x's are eliminated. And then we get minus 9z plus 3z, which will give us minus 6z, and that's equal to minus 17 minus 1, which is equal to minus 18. Now I'm going to divide both sides by minus 6 to give me the value for z. So minus 6z divided by minus 6 is just z. Then minus 18 divided by minus 6 is 3. So therefore, z is equal to 3. So now to find x, I'm just going to sub my value for z back into one of the equations, either equation star or equation square. So as I said, I'm going to pick equation star and then sub 3 back in for z and then work out my value for x. So we get 5x plus 9 by 3 is equal to 17, which is 5x plus 27 is equal to 17. So now I'm going to minus 27 from both sides, which gives me 5x is equal to minus 10. And now dividing both sides by 5 to get a value for x, we get x is equal to minus 10 over 5, which means x is equal to minus 2. So that's my value for x. x is equal to minus 2. So now we have the value for z and x. I'm going to pick one of the three original equations. So either the pink equation, yellow equation, or the purple equation. And I'm going to sub in z and x. And then I should be able to work out my value of y from both of those. So I'm going to pick the pink equation, which was x plus 5y plus 5z is equal to minus 2. And let's see what we get for y. So now subbing in 3 for z and minus 2 for x, we get minus 2 plus 5y plus 5 by 3 is equal to minus 2. 
and this gives us minus 2 plus 5y plus 15 is equal to minus 2, which gives us 5y plus 13 is equal to minus 2. And now I'm going to minus 13 from both sides to give me 5y is equal to minus 15, which gives me 5y is equal to minus 15. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 5 to get rid of the 5 on the left hand side, which will give me my value for y. So 5y divided by 5 is just y, then minus 15 divided by 5 is minus 15 over 5, and minus 15 over 5 is just minus 3, so therefore y is equal to minus 3. So now we have our values for x, y, and z, so x is minus 2, y is minus 3, and z is equal to 3. So there are answers for question 1, part a. We're now going to move on to part b of the question. So we're given a function f of x, which is equal to x over x plus 3, plus 3 times 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x minus 6. And question b, part 1, is worth 10 marks, and we're asked to show that f of x is equal to x plus 1 over x minus 2. So we have our function, so I'm going to write that out again. So x over x plus 3 plus 3 times 2x plus 1 over x squared plus x minus 6. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factorise the denominator of the fraction on the right. So I'm going to factorise x squared plus x minus 6, and this is a quadratic trinomial. So that can be factorised as x plus 3 times by x minus 2, so let's write that out. So now to add both of these fractions together, I need to work out the lowest common multiple of x plus 3 and x plus 3 times by x minus 2. So the lowest common multiple of both of those is just x plus 3 times by x minus 2. So that's going to be the denominator of our single fraction. So now I have to multiply the x on the left hand side, so this x here, by the x minus 2 over here. And now to write the numerators in the single fraction, I'm going to have to multiply them by the opposite side of whatever isn't in their fraction. So now to combine the numerators on top, I'm going to have to cross multiply by whichever denominator is not in that particular fraction. So for example, for the x over x plus 3, I'm going to multiply that by x minus 2, as x minus 2 is not in the x over x plus 3 fraction. So then we get x times by x minus 2, and then the 3 times by 2x plus 1. So I can only multiply that by x plus 3. However, there is already an x plus 3 in the fraction on the right. So we just leave that as plus 3 times by 2x plus 1. So now I'm going to multiply this out. So then we get x squared minus 2x plus 6x plus 1. And that can be simplified as x squared plus 4x plus 3. So now factorizing the numerator. So factorizing x squared plus 4x plus 3, we get x plus 3 times by x plus 1. And again, it's over the same denominator. And we have an x plus 3 on the top and the bottom, which means they'll just cancel each other out. And then we'll be left with x plus 1 over x minus 2. And that's what we had to show for the question. And we've shown it, which means we have our answer for b part 1. And now we're going to move on to b part 2. And again, this is also worth 10 marks. So here we have to find the range of values for x, for which f of x is smaller than 4, where x is smaller than or equal to 2. So f of x again is x plus 1 over x minus 2. And now we have to figure out where that is smaller than 4. So I want to get rid of the fraction here. So I can't just multiply both sides by x minus 2, as if the x minus 2 is negative, then this symbol here would have to change. So to ensure that it's not negative, I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 2 squared, as any number squared must be positive. So one of the x minus 2 squareds will cancel with the denominator of the fraction on the left. So we'll be left with x minus 2 times by x plus 1. And then on the right hand side, we'll get 4 times by x minus 2 squared. So I'm going to do that out here on the side. So x minus 2 squared is the same thing as x minus 2 by x minus 2. And multiplying that out, we get x by x, which is x squared, minus 2x, minus 2x, plus 4, which gives us x squared minus 4x plus 4. So now we have x minus 2 by x plus 1, smaller than 4 times by x squared minus 4x plus 4. So now on the left hand side, x minus 2 by x plus 1 is going to give us x squared minus 2x plus x minus 2. is smaller than, and then on the right hand side we get 4x squared minus 16x plus 16. So now we're going to add like terms together, so we get x squared minus x minus 2, smaller than 4x squared minus 16x plus 16. So now I'm going to move all the numbers on the left hand side over to the right hand side. So we get 0 is smaller than 4x squared minus x squared minus 16x plus x and plus 16 plus 2. So now we can add all like terms together again. So then we get 3x squared minus 15x plus 18 is bigger than 0. And I can divide this by 3 to make it easier for us, which gives me x squared minus 5x plus 6 is bigger than 0. So now we have a quadratic trinomial and we have to solve for x. 
So the first thing to do is to factorize using the same method that we factorized the denominator of the fraction in B part one. So you can use the guide number method if you want, or you could use the minus B formula, but here I'm just gonna do it out quickly as I think this is a simple enough one. So we can factorize that by rewriting it as X minus three times by X minus two. So now I'm gonna put both of these equal to zero. So we get X minus three is equal to zero and X minus two is equal to zero, which gives X is equal to three and X is equal to two. So now we get our two values for x, but remember this is an inequality. So it has to be either x is bigger than or smaller than three, or x is bigger than or smaller than two. You may get this together. So you may have one equality or you may have two separate inequalities. And to decide this, I'm gonna draw out a graph. So it's a quadratic, so it looks something like this. So now we know from up here that the function is bigger than zero, which means it's going to be the areas where the graph is above the x-axis. So it's gonna be, this portion here and this portion here. So it's split in the graph, which means we're gonna have two separate answers and two separate inequalities. So we can see that it's where X is smaller than two and where X is bigger than three. So they're both of our separate inequalities. So X is bigger than three and X is smaller than two. But if the shaded area there was beneath the graph and there was only one shaded area, then we'd only have one singular inequality with both the two and the three in the same inequality. But that's your answer anyways for B part two, the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.